Oh, look at this, a cancelled interview. Hey guys, this is Nick from Retro Games HQ, and today I'm bringing you an interview that I had with Carl, the developer of Abomi Nation. Now, why was it cancelled? I'll give you the context. This was supposed to be put at the end of MonCon. For those of you that do not know, MonCon is the online monster taming convention, and I've held it for the past two years. It's all about indie monster taming games and giving them the attention so that they can well, succeed. It's a fantastic budding genre, and I wanted to give, you know, them a, another platform to stand on. Well, this year, Twitter decided to do what it does, and some people on Twitter tried to cancel me with some of my weakest tweets ever. It was quite embarrassing on their part, because I know that they went through like two years of my tweets, and they could have done better, but uh, for some reason, they, they didn't. Anyways, Carl decided to, after seeing this stuff, the developer of Abomination decided to contact me saying, hey, I don't want anything to do with you in a big long wall of text pretty much and saying, hey, but I do know it's just a few hours before MonCon starts, so I'm not going to ask you to pretty much pull my trailer out of MonCon this year. Well, I had not put this interview in yet and I planned to do it at the end, so I thought, well, I'm not even going to put the interview in. It's going to give me less time. You know, I'm going to have to process this less time. So I just decided, uh, screw the interview. Well, I was going through files today, saw the interview. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just sitting on this. So I've decided I'm going to put it out. Now, my enemies, which are the people that try to cancel me, you can go check it out. They said that MonCon was fantastic. It was a great idea. You know, they should try to replicate it. They were talking about all this stuff. So if my enemies are saying that what I'm doing is that good, you should go check out the past two years mon cons i really like them they're about an hour long each and you will enjoy both of them if you like monster taming games or even some indie monster taming games you'll, you'll go love it you'll love it if you listen to it go watch it and next year just to tell you i am going to do mon con again and i'm going to lean more into it i know that they'll come and try to cancel me i know they'll try to contact more game devs but guess what that's free marketing i'm going to take all of it <laughs> So, that's why I'm also going to put out this interview. So, let's just get into the interview. How about that? It's a good interview. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Too sad Carl went the way he did. But Abomination is a pretty good game. So, here's the interview, guys. So, hey everyone. I'm Carl Pilo. I'm the developer on Abomination. I've, developed, I've been developing Abomination for about five years now. Um... It's a monster taming roguelike RPG, so every time you start a new run, um, the encounters and bosses are, will all be randomized, so you'll get a new team every single time you play. Um, I'm working on a large new update right now that'll be launching soon enough. Follow my Twitter and Discord to see updates on that. And I'm here for an interview with HG22. Yeah. Uh, so... How many Abomis did you start with? Because I know, was it 100? or? Yeah, it was 100 on the nose uh, when I launched the game. Cause I know right now been... we're at 130. Yeah, I and... was wondering. I was thinking, he's added a, a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then the update um, that I'm working on right now will obviously add much more as well. Right. I don't have, I'm not advertising a final number yet, but I do know what it is. <laughs> Well, I guess what inspired you was the Nuzlocks. Yeah, so um, Abomination was uh, initially, like I started development initially because I was really into doing Nuzlocke challenges. Um, and the oh, for people who don't know, that's playing Pokemon with a specialized rule set where you can only catch one encounter per new area. And then once that encounter dies, you have to uh, release it permanently. So every death is permanent. Um, and it really, um, adds this layer of challenge and replayability and variety, uh, to a game that I think really needed it. And I realized not many games or not any games at the time were really taking advantage of the, uh, popularity of that new, of this new challenge that so many people were playing. So, uh, I decided to make a game designed around it. Um, and that's when Abomination was born. Yeah, I've played through it now three times. Uh, it's really fun. Uh, you got all kinds of different settings. It isn't just like one Nuzlocke setting. You've got um, from easy to what's the hardest, brutal. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that's I, good that you played it three times. That speaks to its replayability. <laughs> yeah, it's really well, three times to beat it. I played it multiple more times where I just my whole team died. You know. <laughs> oh I, yeah. <laughs> well, that's still good. Uh, but one of the things I really like about it's the um like a lot of the quality of life stuff. Uh, for example, the damage is the damage calculations plain and simple, and you get to see it if you want to. You know, there's right. no guessing at all, which is huge. Yeah, I was inspired by that because when people play competitive Pokemon, um, whenever they like really need to know exactly how much damage they can do, um, whenever they play on Pokemon Showdown, they just end up opening a damage calculator and figuring it out. Um, and I figured if players are going to do that anyway, why not give them that information? I mean, because like realistically, if they you know, we're extremely good at math. They could figure out how much damage they were doing already. Um, so why make the player jump through those hoots? Just, you know, just make, just tell them how much the damage is going to do, especially in a permadeath setting where things like that can matter so much. Yeah. I was it... inspired by um, Slay the Spire in that regard, uh, because having the, the enemy's attacks telegraphed so clearly um, actually didn't make the game easier, but rather allowed you to make it harder because once you know what the enemy can do, then you can plan for it a lot more. So it allows you to increase the difficulty without actually like changing how much damage the attacks are doing. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite things because a lot of games just have uh, RNG for, to some extent for damage. And when mm -hmm. it comes to absolutely like Nuzlocke, that's one of the most uh, irritating things ever. <laughs> yeah, I try to uh, minimize... The RNG and Abomination. I didn't completely remove it. I know some games uh, went that route. I think Temtem mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have any RNG in it, really. Um, but I thought for a roguelike, um, it's so inherently RNG already, uh, you know, ran randomizing your teams and, and your choices and all that. Uh, so I did keep a little bit in. Um, not every move can crit in Abomination. Uh, critting is like a special property of, of certain moves. Most of them are like slicing moves or piercing moves or stuff like that. Um uh, and what else is, is random? I guess there are, like, secondary effects still uh, that can pop up. But there are no damage rolls. Uh, Pokemon has damage rolls where it'll do in between, in between I think, 85% uh, and 100% of the potential damage it's going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so every single hit is, you know, the potential to not get what you need. So I figured, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to keep it a straight number. Right. So after developing it for five years, are you still able to play it and have fun? Yeah, um, it's been a while since I've done a run. Basically what I do whenever I really play runs is because I'm always, my 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 own save files are always in this constant state of like borderline brokenness from, you know, using my dev tools to, to beta test stuff and make sure everything's working. So I never have like a real run going until basically right before updates drop, I do a run just to test and make sure everything is uh is working well and i think putting that time like you know i kind of forcing myself to have time in between runs you know keeps the game <laughs> fresh for me when i play it especially because every time i play i get to play with new abomies before everyone else well, that's true um well let's see how many months has it been out already um it launched at the very end of july is july 30th uh so what's that uh... 10 months yeah we're going on 10 months now yeah it doesn't seem like that long ago that i was playing the uh the demo for it yeah the demo launched in january of 2020 actually wow so yeah well over two years ago yeah and i remember when it came out the first thing i did was uh trying to because i mean it, it's extremely fun first thing i tried to do though was a Deathless, brutal run, and yeah. <laughs> that that's near impossible. Have you even been able to do like a deathless brutal run? I mean, I don't want to brag, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I did once, yeah, deathless brutal run. But I do still, um, pretty often, you know, have a lot of deaths in my runs, even as the dev. So then, you know, that tells me the balance is at least uh, <laughs> tweaked pretty well. Yeah, uh, that's one of the fun things about it is, um. You can be, you can get good at it, and you still can just be, you know, oh, well, uh, there goes two of my bomies in one battle. And you couldn't do, yeah. you know, it's like, you can't do much about it. It's just sometimes you don't get, um, sometimes you don't get enough apples. 
You know, yeah, I mean, sometimes, to... sometimes my deaths aren't even down to RNG. They're just, oh, here's a really strong opponent. And, you know, strategically, the best move is, like, you know somebody's going to die. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide who your sack is, you know, who's least valuable on your team. Or, alternatively, who are you the least attached to? And that's the tough call with Abomination. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favorite part of it, I guess, uh, since you're, you know, the developer? Uh, Development-wise or playing it-wise? Well, I guess both, because it's been a journey for you. Uh, five years of development, that's definitely a journey. All right. Um, let's see. I'll start with playing it. Um, I think... The goal that I wanted to achieve with Abomination is that I wanted players to be able to craft their own stories with their teams through the game. So, uh, for example, like to talk about Nuzlocke again, whenever that challenge really blew up in the early 2010s, uh, a whole bunch of people were making their own Nuzlocke comics and kind of just um, making a whole series out of their playthrough and you know characterizing their pokemon uh and having little dynamics between their team and so i worked that into abomination uh with the bond mechanics so your team can bond with each other um and there some of their dialogue will change and uh, certain events will change based on how close your abomies are and uh, each abomi also has a randomly generated personality so i think that really helps drive uh, the point home that your team is very unique to you and not only that but the way that you manage your team and the way they interact with each other will be unique every run and when I hear players tell me that that they've they've got their little you know headcanon relationships or um, the way that they use these two abomies together to make something unique I think you know that's where you know I'm I'm proudest and I've succeeded the most um development wise my favorite thing to do in development um it can be a toss-up i mean I, I do really like coding um it feels good to have this big problem and to finally overcome it with you know, basically like coding is just problem solving skills in a creative way um even if you know sometimes you want to bash your head against the wall um but i <sighs> Recently, I've been really getting into animation more, and as fun as coding is, there is a stressful element where you're not positive every time that you can actually solve the puzzle. Um, but with animation, I know I'm I'm gonna get it eventually. I just have to work at it. Um, so it basically my my work cycle is split into like, okay, I'm gonna make all the animations first for the abomies, and then I'm gonna implement them into the game and code stuff. And so during those uh, periods where I'm just animating, I find that very relaxing. Or it just feels like I have all the time in the world. You know, I'm just going to draw this little raptor guy, and I'm going to try and make him look the best I can. And, oh, look, he's done, and he came out pretty nice. And I, that's just a really, like, relaxing feeling to me. So uh, I'm digging animation a lot more recently. Uh, was there any kind of game or anything that inspired your just art style because it's definitely unique yeah um i would say my art spot my art style was more inspired by just my abilities <laughs> that's all um i really know how to use um so I, I animate the game in adobe animate uh better known as flash previously um so i guess the, the art style can best be described as like Newgrounds art style, um, because a lot of uh, Flash cartoons found their home on Newgrounds, so it, it evokes a lot of that. Um, and this mix of 2D Flash animation, the, these uh, vector art abomies, uh, with 3D background, uh, that just kind of evolved as I worked on the game. The game initially was was flat. It kind of had this weird like bird's eye view. But the abomies were not exactly bird's eye. They were, you know, kind of facing to the side. So it didn't it didn't look proper. And then once I figured out how to make it a, a 3D world, then it, it kind of evolved from there. Mm. Yeah, In I terms mean... of influences, yeah, I I don't think uh I don't know. It's it's hard to pull a game <laughs> that, that looks like Abomination, I mean for better or worse. 
Yeah, that's true. And even though you're talking about like flash and stuff, it looks that's definitely not to put it down in how it looks. It's it got a very unique. No, style. I mean Adobe Animate is used to animate a lot of TV shows right now. You know, mm -hmm. it's a standard uh, animation software. Um, but you know, some the way that I use it, especially because I I learned to use it circa oh god circa like 2006 um then you know the, my style is, is very evocative of like old new grounds sometimes mm -hmm. yeah i mean it looks really good that it the characters definitely feel like they are interacting with the world and each other it's not just okay mm -hmm. i have these uh abomies and i'm gonna go fight you know like you said they interact with each other it feels pretty good and another thing that i really like um beyond the personalities and stuff that makes the world feel more real like it's actually uh, kind of exists to some extent is the unique cries of the abomies yeah you know yeah um it's funny you mentioned that um before uh we called just now that's what i was doing today i was recording a bunch of new cries for the the new update um the cries I'm I'm glad people like them. That's all I can say. <laughs> it can get uh, kind of hard to make your voice sound different after you know 130 takes of just going <laughs> into the microphone and then uh, <laughs> editing the pitch and the speed or whatever. Um, I am no sound designer by trade. Um, I just do sound design because I have to because I do everything. Um, so I find it really annoying actually. But um, I guess the end result people end up liking. <laughs> Well, it was definitely, um, I don't know, brave to take it that direction because I think that's something that could have uh, went really bad, but it ended up going really, you know, right. Uh, my favorite is, um, oh, I forgot his name. It's something tight. It's one where it's just a Al beer Petit. can. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Alpatine right away. Everyone <laughs> mentions that one. <laughs> yeah, that was um, when I was recording for the first batch. I was recording uh, like 40 at a time. Um, and so that's when I really felt like, oh, God, they're all starting to sound the same because they're all me. And I, I got my girlfriend to come in and do a couple, but um, most of them just sound like me. Um, and so I was just kind of using stuff around my desk to uh, <laughs> um, to make different noises. And then to, I guess, to loosen me up, my girlfriend brought me a beer and I <laughs> I just used that. Yeah. And then that, that's, that's the one that sticks out so much. Everyone, I didn't think it was that noticeable when I recorded it. And I, I did edit it a little bit. And I was like, oh, it just sounds like, chick, chick. all right, that sounds good. Um, but everyone immediately notices that it's a can. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I remember hearing it the first time. And uh, I cannot stop laughing, you know, because it's just, you hear all these, just someone saying a, a line or a cry. And then suddenly you got a can opening, you know. And it fits the <laughs> monster really well. Yeah, I mean... Alpatite, I guess, doesn't have a mouth. He's just a pile of rocks. So, what noises would he make? I don't know. He's not going to go rah. <laughs> uh, but I know you said that you have an update coming up. Yes. Uh, so, you've been updating for almost a year, which is pretty impressive. Um, constantly okay. coming out with content. You said you're up to 130 now? Yep. All right. Um, 130 plus the new update. <laughs> well, do you time wise, are you just planning to just keep updating or is it just um, you got an idea for an end, you know? Um, it's a little bit up in the air, uh, by which I mean, I'm treating this update like it's the final one. Um, I'm not calling it the final update just in case, you know, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want this update to be big to, it's coming not just with new Abomies, but also new features, you know, addressing some issues. Um, so I think like the, if the, I'm treating it like if this were the final version of Abomination and this is what was shipped and I couldn't touch it again, I'd be happy. Uh, so um, it's going to be something major. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to overhype it. It's not like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm adding like a new story mode or something. Mm -hmm. um, but I am adding a lot into this update, a lot more than, than the last updates. So it's a good time to pretty much get Abomination. Oh, good time to what? To get Abomination. 
Oh, yes. Uh, especially a good time right now. Um, <laughs> actually, I don't know if, when this interview is going out, uh, but it is on sale right now for 40% off until May 9th, I believe. Mm. Well, I mean, every so often I've seen it go on sale, I think. Oh, yes, it'll be on sale again in the future. Yeah, so, so it's not like it's a, the last chance, you know? Um, yes, it's the last chance. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if someone had never seen Abomination before and is just seeing, like, video of it right now, uh, what would you say to them to be, like, to get them to play it? Because it's, it's obviously a very unique game. Um, I would say, um, just play up to the first boss and then tell me the story of your team. Tell me who you got. Tell me if anyone died. Tell me their little relationships. Because, you know, everything feels unique. Um, I was just watching, um, a playthrough by Bloba today, Monster Tamer Bloba. And, uh, even though he's played through a few times too um his first boss encounter in that playthrough was actually um really hype um in the in a way that uh, i think the boss was about to uh maybe not sweep him but at least take out half his team um but as the boss hit him and he lived on like 2 hp um his ability activated and his speed rose and because of that speed boost, he can now outspeed the boss and kill him instead of having the boss to take him out. So, just little things like that, even up, up to the first boss. I love seeing the unique interactions like that. So, I guess if I were, like, encouraging a new player to play, I would say, you know, you're going to get a unique story out of it. Yeah, that's one thing. When I have paid attention to the Discord server, uh, especially, mm -hmm. especially towards launch when there's a uh, there was a lot of people going on. It was like it wasn't just one person that was excited one time. It was they were excited for this playthrough. Well, then they got wiped out, but then they were excited for the next playthrough, and they were constantly sharing it. Like there's some about yeah, it there, that's easy to team connect share to. section um, on the Discord. Uh, whether you win or lose a run, you can see on the main menu there's a there's a past run section. Um, and you can share just a screenshot of that um, on the Discord as like a, a summation of your run so people can see your winning team um, or just see everyone who died. Isn't there? And a... I find that really interesting that, uh, you know, it gives people a little avenue. Like, it's just kind of like validation. Like, they get to share <laughs> mm. their little unique story. It's not just for them. Isn't there some kind of um, code sharing? Yeah, um, whenever a bombies die, um, you can take uh, a little code that's generated on their gravestone, um, copy that over, you can share that on my Discord as well, or you can share it anywhere, you can just share it between your friends. Um, and then if you copy that code and find an NPC in another game, another person's game, the NPC will say that they're able to revive an Abami from from a different century, from a different version of the island. And whenever you paste it in, that Abami will get revived onto that team, so they'll get a second chance at life. Yeah, I know. Um, <clears throat> I definitely enjoyed playing it a lot. I know I, I put up only a fraction of what I played on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And for a while there, I was paying attention to people's runs in the Discord because I don't know what there is about it, but it's even if you have a short run where you wipe out uh, by the first boss, you're invested in it. And it kind of, you would think maybe you feel depressed, you know, but it makes you want to play it again. And uh, it's one of my favorite games probably of last year to come out. It just, the replayability is crazy. Oh, you know? thanks. It, it's very yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's why um, death isn't as discouraging because it's not like you have to go through the same file again and get the same encounters and get back to where you were. Because where you were is about to change. You know, you're going to get a whole new team and yeah. try and get through with them. Yeah. But, um, Abomination, see, it's on Steam, right? 
Mm -hmm. And are there any other places that people can find uh, well, Abomination or anything to do with it? Um, you can go to my website, orangepylongames.com. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at orange underscore pylon. And you can join the Discord, whose link I don't have memorized because it's a bunch of letters. But, um, you know, you can find that link on the Steam page or on my Twitter. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll put it in the description below. Or you can just scroll down. <laughs> But is there anything else you want to say about Bomi Nation since, uh, you know, you have been working on it for five years and it's definitely something that's become a huge part of your life? I'm very thankful for all the support. I'm I'm glad that I finally have, you know, enough people interested to say that I have, you know, I have a community. And that's something when starting out is it's really hard to gauge, you know, if you'll ever have that. I remember you know, had launching the demo in January 2020. And I, like, I just started my, my Twitter. I had, like, no followers. So I didn't know how I was going to grow, you know, who would pay attention to me, if I would land a publisher, any of that. Um, so it's just, you know, it's been a good journey. I'm glad everyone does enjoy the game. It's very validating by the end of it to hear all that well i definitely like it i think anybody that's interested in nuzlocks or just monster tamer games in general should go get it but uh and i definitely will be playing the update <laughs> um i guess oh, yeah i'm excited for you to play it yeah I'm, i'll i'll put up a, a playthrough you know because I, I know you do uh, watch them you know oh i do yeah like i mentioned <laughs> i was just watching one earlier today but uh thank you for coming on this interview very much oh yeah no problem thanks for having me and we'll definitely be speaking later you know uh i plan on playing it for a while so <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll see you then all right see it have a good one